Cocaine Bear is the kind of film that indulges in novelty rather than being a necessary cinematic experience. This Elizabeth Banks directed half horror, half dark comedy adventure simply revels in the fact that it is Cocaine Bear, a movie about a bear that does cocaine, something that is very loosely based on a true story about how a bear did cocaine. Though admittedly, that story did not result in a bear rampage like the film suggests. Because honestly, when it comes to inspired by true events style of movies, Cocaine Bear is only only a step above Fargo when it comes to the validity of its fucking claims. And cinematically speaking, Cocaine Bear, a movie about a bear doing cocaine, is a very unique concept that has not been done before save for a sight gag involving Ted, because it sure as shit was not Paddington. But regardless, Cocaine Bear is simply content to ride the high of its fun premise and somehow find excuses to expand itself into a full feature length film, though at a brisk 95 minutes the movie is cutting the definition of a quote unquote feature length film very fucking close, all while aiming to have that said film be a good genre romp, which unfortunately Cocaine Bear does to somewhat entertaining yet overall inconsistent results. On the one hand, scenes involving the titular Cocaine Bear, especially in the film's back half, are fun and humorous. After all, it is a film about a bear that goes on a coked up rampage against hapless hikers, punks, park rangers, drug dealers, EMTs, and etc. There's just an unconventional aspect of this idea that is exciting for a movie. But on the other hand, Cocaine Bear's actual story and setup to these eventual violent and bloody payoffs feels very lackluster at times. Sure, the narrative does have an interesting setup. In the 80s, a drug dealer chucked millions of dollars worth of cocaine off a plane over the state of Georgia and onto Blood Mountain, a noteworthy Appalachian locale, which then causes drug dealers and cops to converge onto the location, all while unsuspecting innocent bystanders, including two runaway teens and one of their parents, all in their own time, come across the cocaine and a bear that is fueled by blood and the aforementioned cocaine, which as far as ideas go, is pretty fucking awesome. Because as far as cinematic experiences go, this premise just sounds like an overall enjoyable yet silly time at the movies. But there is an issue here. See, a lot of these characters aren't very well fleshed out, and some of them are just downright unlikable. For a few examples, Sari is very one note in how she wants to just find her daughter and save her from a bear, which yes, is a very understandable motivation, but still I would have liked to have seen more characteristics from this character than her just being a single mom and the occasional mentions of her occupation. Eddie is also very one note in that he's depressed, though at least he does have a very decent arc. Bob is kind of a dick cop that hits on a woman under his command. And Ranger Liz is trigger happy and wants one of her fellow rangers to rail her with his big lumber tree. <laughs> There's just a lot of characters that don't have that much going on with them. And admittedly, it's okay to have some one-dimensional or even downright unlikable characters in a movie like this. After all, the cocaine bear needs meat fodder. But still, the movie spends so much time setting up all these really uninteresting, one-dimensional, and occasionally dislikable characters instead of crafting well-rounded people that get the audience invested in the story. And while sure there are some good characters like the kids Dee Dee and Henry, Aeola Smart's Officer Reva, because you know, Avienda, the drug dealers in David and the late Ray Liotta Sid, and the EMTs Beth and Tom, who honestly deserved way more screen time because they are a fuck ton of fun. But even with those caveats, Cocaine Bear's character development is very inconsistent, especially in the front half of the film, which spends a lot of time setting up these characters, which all vary in quality. The characters, especially in the front half, just don't always work. Additionally, Cocaine Bear is held back by some technical issues as well. Some of the comedic banter isn't very funny or engaging, some of the editing and the overusage of flashbacks to either set up something humorous or informative feels awkward at times, and our terrifying high flying cocaine bear appears very cartoonish at times. Which, yes, I know that the cocaine bear is a CGI creature, because you obviously cannot train a wild bear to act like it is on cocaine. And even if you could, you can never do that responsibly. Because, obviously. But still, the cocaine bear's cartoonish design does cause the movie to more or less veer towards the campy dark comedy side of things more so than being a horror film, which admittedly has its merits. But given the aforementioned bad comedy and the hit and miss character development, the movie just doesn't always stick the landing here. It just doesn't always capitalize on what the tone is aiming for. But still, Cocaine Bear is still fine enough as a novelty film. Because even despite its faults, it's still a blissfully silly film about a bear that does cocaine and goes on a rampage. Page. And if all you wanted was to see a bear do cocaine and eviscerate people, you'll probably have a decent time at the movie theater here. Because overall, I honestly did, even with Cocaine Bear's myriad of problems. Mostly because, and I cannot state this enough, it's a movie about a bear that does cocaine. If that title and concept doesn't immediately sell you on this film, 
then nothing will. And with that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment telling me what you think of Cocaine Bear. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page. $1 a month gets one of this credit sequence, and $5 a month allows you to make quick review and impressions requests. The link to my Patreon is in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I just want to thank my patrons, particularly my high-tier ones in Samantha Devlin, Mom, and Morgan. Thank you for supporting what I do. Love y'all.